Guys, hashtag can't stop, won't stop. Hi, hello, and welcome to my documentation of reading Blackbird. Because I feel the need to document it, and I feel the need to clarify some things first. So, you know how I said in my unboxing video I thought it was vampires? No, it's not vampires. But it is demons, so I wasn't too far off. Yes, so we primarily follow Misao here. And she is a girl who has the sight, as they say. So she can see all the demons walking around, kind of like she say in Ancient Magus Bride. Similar kind of situation. She can see all the spirits and stuff. And her 16th birthday is approaching. And apparently, on her 16th birthday, that means she's fair game to all the demons. And so all of the demons either want to eat her to consume her power or marry her and do her to gain power. In the middle of all of that, we have Kyo, who met her in childhood, but is a Tengu. Er, no, I said that wrong again. Crap. Let me, let me make sure. I'm, I'm saying the wrong thing, but I know it's right here. No, Tengu's right. Okay, I said it right. So he's a Tengu and is like the clan leader as well. And so he prom they make a childhood promise that he will come back and make her his bride one day. And so she's kind of been holding on to that, found that precious. And then all of a sudden, you know, she's attacked by a demon and he comes waltzing in and saving her. And so now all he wants to do is save her and protect her. So whenever she's injured, he licks her wounds. Oh yeah, it goes there. And he, uh, so it, it heals her, but it also in turn gives him power because he gets power from her blood. It's short-lived, but he does get power from it. Needless to say, there was a moment in the middle of this where he's healing her, but she's kind of passed out. So it becomes this like erotic dream to her and I was living for it. Like, this is so on brand for me. It's not even funny. It's an age gap romance with paranormal and smut. Like, all those things wrapped into one lovely artistic package. And I'm a very, very happy girl. <laughs> so glad I found that box set for such a good price and bought it. Because, man, I have no regrets. Not a single one. <laughs> Anyhow, so this is the beginning of this documentation vlog. Volume 1 is complete, and I'm already severely attached to several of these characters. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Anyway, that's the plan. I'll check in with you once I read another volume, or something really interesting in a volume happens. So, at the very least, I will see you at the end of volume 2. <laughs> Ah, okay, so I'm laughing super hard because I'm in the middle of volume two and there's a part <laughs> where it says, my little tango is raising its head. <laughs> I just, I, I can't, I can't, this is so funny. <laughs> oh, I'm still loving it, but, but it's funny. <laughs> I'm sure my reaction is a bit much for <laughs> But it's just funny to me, and I'm gonna cut this off, but you guys just had to see that. Okay, bye. Hi, so we have jumped to morning. I did finish volume two of Blackbird, and I just wanted to get on here and talk about it a little bit. I'm still really enjoying this series. Now, I'm gonna be clear that there's a very clear power dynamic in this series, and it is a male dominant and a female submissive. Not like BDSM, but that's the easiest way to kind of describe it. So if that's going to bother you, give this series a hard pass. For me, yes, he's dominant and protective and almost possessive of her. This might change. I'm only two volumes in. But to me, there's still that line where there's respect. She still has the freedom to go wherever she wants. She frequently tells him no and he doesn't freak out about it. And he always 
stops whatever the behavior is when she says no and stop. Like, I've never truly felt that he has forced himself on her in a sexual way. He is possessive to an extent. So some people are going to be bothered by his behavior. So I'm not going to say that Blackbird is the be-all, end-all. Everybody needs to read it because some people are really going to be bothered by that dynamic. So I'm not going to hide the fact that it's there. I'm just going to say for me in this particular read, it doesn't bother me. Um, I had one of my friends DMing me last night as she was getting kind of my organic thoughts because I was sharing them with some friends. And she went back and forth with me and said, well, I remember in your Yaoi video that you didn't like the aggressiveness and the possessiveness. Why is it different in this situation? And I just explained that it was the respect thing. Because as long as some people are okay with that kind of dom-sub relationship, it's not always unhealthy. It's when it gets to an unhealthy point and respect goes out the window and the person, the dominant doesn't care about the submissive's feeling. I'm using dom and sub because that's the easiest way to describe it to adults. Because we all know. <laughs> but the easiest way to kind of... Hi, light song. You say hi to the people. Say hi, baby. He wants snuggles really bad before I go to work. So, yes. Anyways, that's kind of the dynamic between them. So if that's going to bother you, like, hard pass. Like, don't waste your money. Don't waste your time. Like I say, for me, because there's still respect, she still has the right to choose... All behavior stops if she says no to whatever he's doing. I'm okay at this point. Again, I'm only two volumes into an 18-volume series, so that might change down the road. And if that changes, then I most likely won't love the series like I'm loving it now. But, you know, this is just a mashup of a bunch of tropes that I really like. I mean, we're talking about an age gap paranormal romance with smut. I mean, it's it's my crap. You guys know this. So... I'm really interested to see how this continues to go. I am going to take volumes three and four to work with me today. So as I read those, I will let you know. But I need to go quickly throw on a little bit of at least concealer and mascara so I do not look so tired. I did not sleep last night. So I have eternally dark bags under my eyes. Um, I got to sleep, had a really bad dream and couldn't get back to sleep. So I just stayed up. Got some good reads, reviews done and other things, but. Yeah, that's what's going on, and I don't know why I feel like I have to tell you what's going on, but anyways, we'll chat after I read some more Blackbird. Looking a little bit better and put together now. I'm here at work. Um, haven't really done my hair yet, but at least my makeup's done. So, anyway, Blackbird Volume 3. Um, I'm officially 10 chapters into this story now, because... Each volume can contain between three to five, sometimes more chapters if they're really short. So we just hit chapter 10. And I... When it comes to Kyo, I really respect him right now because he wants a lot more than she's willing to give him. If he had his way, he would have already, like, bedded her and all those kinds of things. But he's being very patient with her and sweet and kind and letting her come around to it on her own. Because this whole thing is a completely different process for her. And so his possessiveness makes sense to me because he feels like he has to protect her. But at the same time... He wants to let her choose. And that's the difference right there. When the dominant character still lets the submissive character make their own decisions in important things like that, rather than taking it for themselves, that's when I can enjoy a story. Um, in the Yaoi stuff I had read in that video, a lot of it, the character didn't have a choice. They had a sexual experience forced on them. It was essentially rape. It's not okay. And this story, though it has, on the outside, it has some similar elements. It's nowhere near the same for me. Because there's respect. There's still a choice for the character. Because she could just choose to leave him. And he would respect that. He would just protect her from a distance like he's said he would. It would be hard for him, but he would do it because he loves her and cares for her. And wants her 
to love him the way the same way she loves him or he loves her she wants her he wants her oh my gosh i'm struggling sorry he wants her to love him as to love him as much as he loves her there we go i think i finally got that right either way he wants the amount of love to be the same and he's giving her time to have that and letting her make her own decisions and that means a lot to me and that's what makes this story good to me is he's though he wants to take what he wants he respects her enough to let her choose and let her come to it on her own so i'm good with it for now yeah he touches her you know unexpectedly more often than i'd probably like so i can get why people wouldn't like him i don't know it's i like it so far and again i'm only 10 chapters into and in volume three of an 18 volume series things could take a turn for the worse so we'll see how this goes okay friends so i just finished volume three now at this point in the story misao is definitely at this point choosing to be with kyo even though she doesn't know 100 percent what that means for her at this point that's still her choice and she only came to that at the end of this volume but she still has reservations and hesitations and stuff. So I'm interested to see how the next volume plays out. There was a moment in this volume where Kyo has to kill somebody in front of Misao. And initially she starts to look away, but he asked her to watch. And because he felt like he was doing it for her and... She did decide to watch it to fully understand the grasp of what he's willing to do for her. And I don't know how I felt about that, if I'm honest. Like, I see and I understand for the plot why, but I did feel like it was a little heavy-handed. And, you know, the violence was not overly graphic, but, you know, there was arm chopping and head chopping. So, you know, getting a little dark, but we're dealing with demons, so I expected that. No big surprise there. Um, it explained in here that the demons are so pretty because humans would never choose a demon otherwise. So I thought that was a really interesting plot choice. So anyway, that's the end of Volume 3. I will dig into Volume 4. I've got like 45 minutes before my next appointment, so I might even dig into it now. But yes, I am continuing to enjoy this. It's not a perfect series, and it's not without its flaws. I will never say that it's perfect. But I really enjoy it. It's very on brand for stuff that I like. And, you know, this is clearly a guilty pleasure kind of series. This isn't going to be, you know, the most perfect thing ever for most people. And on the back of all the volumes, it does say it was the winner of the 54th Shogaku Kan Manga Award. So it's won an award. So clearly it's not a bad series. But I am enjoying it. I don't know if that's based around like art or story or both. I, I don't know. I will do some research on that before I talk to you again, I'm sure. Okay, so I just finished volume four. And in this one, we're dealing with the fallout of what happened in volume three. And it's pretty heavy. <laughs> um, obviously now there's a plot point that I'm, I'm assuming due to other demon stories that I've read, if she conceives, the baby's going to basically like tear itself out of her stomach and kill her. That's my thought at this point. We'll see if that's what it is. It's very elusive at this point. That's my prediction as of volume four. Again, we've got 14 more to go, so we'll see what happens. I had anticipated that I would read through those volumes more quickly than I originally thought. So I did bring volumes five and six with me to work. So I'm going to dive into volume five. This is like compulsion to the max. And I think it's because I want to document, document it for all of you guys. So this is kind of going to be my focus for the next few days. And yeah, that's what's going on right now. So let's get to reading volume five. All right, so volume five down. Traitors have emerged, trying to keep them apart. 
trying to make somebody else the Tenru clan leader in this volume. Obviously, that's not going to fly because he is my clan leader. But yes, um, there's some positive things that have happened and some negative things that have happened in this volume. I think overall it was one of the better ones because it didn't focus too much on unimportant facts. It's it's just kind of in the heart of the story at this point, and I enjoyed that part. Their dynamic continues to be interesting to me. I, you know, obviously they're, she's 16, she's still young and kind of figuring out life. I mean, he's a little older, but not a lot older. And so it's interesting. And now you throw the brother in the mix and it's confusing, but at least Misao's mom is on board with everything. Dad's still not. But Misao, she's not. Her mom's on board, so I'm okay with mom being on board. So, And they still haven't fully confirmed what I think the big problem is, but considering all the demon-related stories I've read, I'm 95% sure what that is, and that's why people, you know, don't want to tell her, but I'm pretty sure it'll happen anyway. But anyway. That's neither here nor there. On to volume six. So volume six of Blackbird, very plot heavy outside of their coupling. There's a lot of other stuff going on related to their coupling, but it's focusing on those other things right now. And the balance that this series has found in that regard is very pleasant to me. I really enjoy that balance because I still get my romantic parts that I love, but I'm also getting good plot and good story around that. So for me, that works well. We're six volumes in and they still haven't done it. Like there's been a lot of alluding to, lots of talking about, and lots of almost, but they still haven't. I mean, obviously there's a plot, there's plot armor as to why, and I'm slightly frustrated, but I am living for the moments when things start to steam up a little bit. Once they actually do it, this series is going to, it's going to be amazing. But anyways, because clearly they're going to do it before the end of this series because the whole plot revolves around that. So anyhow, yeah, I'm really interested to see where this continues to go. Um, I'm going to take a manga break, read some prose, and I'll get back to manga later. Check in with you when I pick Blackbird back. Hi, hello. I'm back again. It is much later since I last spoke with you, though. It's like almost nine o'clock at night. So I'm currently reading volume seven of Blackbird. And I have two words for y'all. Chocolate spread. Yes! Freaking finally! That was amazing. I wish it was more. It still didn't go quite the distance, but considering it's shoujo, I'm okay. Because I didn't expect it to. But they are now going to be spending the night alone together at her home. So the whole Tengu crew isn't going to be there. It's literally going to be the two of them. Because they keep getting interrupted anyway. Let's go. Let's see what happens. They'll probably get interrupted again because that's just how this series works. All right, so finished volume seven. Volume seven gave me a bath scene that made me very happy. But again, they're playing that we can't do it card. Yay, plot armor that keeps them from actually doing it. <sighs> anyway, I just want the smutties already, okay? <laughs> I have a smutty soul. Leave me alone. Don't judge me. My husband's over here silently judging me, just so y'all know. But anyhow... Um, this volume also introduced a new character, which I think will be interesting because, you know, new character already made stupid, stupid mistake and I'm mad at him for it. But yeah, so volume seven was equally good. The series is averaging four stars overall for me. I mean, it's it's fun. It's not perfect. This is not my top tier favorite thing ever, but I'm still really enjoying it and I'll still revisit it. So, yes. On to volume eight. Hi, friends. So, we are on to the next day. So, as you guys saw last night, 
I read volume seven of Blackbird. They still haven't like done it yet. And I've heard this is a smut-tastic series. So I'm hoping that they do it in this one because then I still have like 10 volumes to enjoy all the smuttiness. I mean, the little glimpses of what I've been given of what the smut could potentially be, like I'm excited for, I'm not going to lie. So I, it's all leading to happening sooner rather than later. So I hope it's in this volume. Anyways, I think that's just my smutty soul talking <laughs> more than anything. But anyway, it's a mood. It's a thing. I'm going to dive in. I'll talk to you when I have something to say. Guys, I'm about to dive into chapter 32. And in chapter 31, he says, come to my house tonight. I want to make you my bride. I'm assuming they're going to do it. Woo! Let's do this. Oh, wow. This is going to get really, really good. I can tell right now. I just finished volume eight and I finished that beloved chapter 32 where they finally do it. And yes, I'm seriously and truly living for it. So volume nine complete. We're dealing with the repercussions in the demon world of what happened now that they've actually done it. Some of the clans are mad and throwing a stink and others are like, okay, let's just align ourselves with them because we're outmatched forever. And somehow, I'm pretty sure I know how, it's been leaked that Kyo's in love with her, with the Seika maiden, for lack of a better thing. That's what she is to them. So they found out he's in love with her, and so now they're targeting her and other humans to try to tear them apart. But they decide to still be together, and they do it again, and it was a short little couple panels, but... The one from the previous one, I'm still kind of riding the high of. So I'm ready for more in the upcoming volumes because they tried to fight doing it again because they thought only once and we'll be okay. And they kept fighting it for a while. And then towards the end of this particular volume, they finally kind of let that happen. And now um kyo's dad has popped back into the picture after being gone for a crazy long time so we'll see what happens so i'm into volume 10 and dad just dropped the bomb of why he disappeared and it made me feel things not all good things and i was a little upset at him for it but he also dropped the bomb that stupid show is the one behind all their problems again. And I'm like, why can't this dude just go away and live his life elsewhere? Why does he have to keep picking on Kyo and Misao? Clearly for plot, but anyway, it just feels like a very convenient plot device that he's still alive and causing all these problems rather than it being somebody else in the village truly behind all of it. Now, he also dropped the name of Sho's supporter, and the story as to why he disappeared led to that reveal, because it's somebody who mistook something else as what somebody wanted, and I'm trying to be fairly vague here, but now that Misao knows everything, it's going to be really interesting to see how this fallout goes. So, digging back in. All right, so volume 10 complete. The plot is getting thicker. They're currently in the Tengu village, and things are heating up in the plot. Sho is back in the village, and um, the traitor is supposedly dead. I don't believe traitor is actually dead. Either way, it seems... Traitor has other people to do their work. And again, trying to remain relatively spoiler-free if you have not read this series, but you kind of wanted an idea of how it's going. So, anyways, still enjoying it. Ten volumes in. This is a solid four-star series for me. So unless something super awful happens by the end that I'm not expecting, then it's going to stay a solid four-star series through. And again, this is what I would revisit again. The smutty bits are more frequent now. I'm enjoying them. I understand why everybody says it's smutastic now. 
And yes, so I have two more volumes with me here at work today. So I'm going to go ahead and dig into volume 11 because I'm on a roll and I'm going with it. Okay, so I'm halfway through volume 11 right now. And it's really interesting to see the mind play that Sho is doing. Sho purposely gave Misao her memories back to remember him. Even though he did it under the guise of trying to, you know, break up or rattle their relationship. Because it seems like the, the spy's partner, as I'll, as I'll call them for now, is interested in Kyo. So they are helping under that guise. And it's incredibly interesting to me. I don't know what to think about it. But um, all that really did was just solidify Misao's feelings for Kyo. And that's kind of where we're at. And yay. With volume 11, the epic Tengu inner battle has begun. Sho and Kyo are officially pitted against each other. And they're having it out at this point. And of course, you know, Misao's thrown in the middle of all of it. And it's hard to read but also very interesting like emotionally it's hard so yes emotionally it's hard to read but it's very politically interesting to watch as they both find ways of playing their hands they both have incredible strength now and it just makes for a very interesting plot because now it's this political game of cat and mouse and so i'm really interested to see how this goes all right y'all so i just finished volume 12 and show's playing dirty, man, like super dirty, going after my boys. And I'm not okay with that. But in this volume, certain members of the boys try to take matters into their own hands in various forms. And Kyo's not having it. Kyo, of course, is Kyo. And I really like how things panned out in this volume. The author did a very good job of misleading in ways, and I'm I'm very pleased. Pleased is the best way I can say it. So this is all I brought to work with me, and it's only 1230, guys. It's been a quiet day because it's my office day at work. For those of you who follow vlogs, you know I have a designated office day at work. So I'm halfway tempted to like put up a sign that I'm out to lunch run home, grab the rest of the stinking series, and just spend the afternoon binging it. Because I have, I am taking one appointment today. I'm taking a late appointment on one of my good friends. So I'm really tempted to do that. Um, I need to read my buddy read with one of my friends real quick. We have a, we're buddy reading a volume of manga a day, so I need to hurry and read that. But after that, I really think I'm going to run home and grab the rest because... I am here for it. It's just good. I'm happy. And yeah, I also have a bunch of reviews I need to write. I really should prioritize that and do that this afternoon. I'll work on some of the reviews and then see how I feel. Hey friend, it's middle of the night day here. So, well, not really middle of the night. It's like 4.30 in the morning. Because I woke up in a panic because I forgot I had the towels from work that I needed to wash. So, ran out to my car, got those, got them started. You know, I have to have them done and dry by 8 o'clock when I leave. And, you know, towels take longer to wash and to dry, and ugh. Can't wait till the dryer at work gets fixed. Need to figure out what I need to do to get that fixed. <laughs> because apparently the landlord's gonna do nothing. So, I just gotta take it into my own hands at this point. So... Since I'm already up, I'm going to dig back in to Blackbird. So, as I was saying before, I was really liking where the story was headed in that last particular volume. But where it ended was quite the cliffhanger. <laughs> so, volume 12 ends on in a place I'm not sure I wanted it to end. So, the next few chapters, or the next few volumes are going to be very telling for this series which will probably determine whether I 
like the whole series and recommend the series or not. Because, you know, I can very visibly see why people wouldn't like this series. But at this point, I'm still really enjoying it. A lot of people, you know, I've said it all right here to you guys. So, you know my thoughts at this point. So, we'll see how this last third goes. Because literally, I have the last six volumes. This is complete in eight volumes, and we're jumping in to 13. So, anyhow, I'm going to dig in. I've got a drink here, so I will chat with you guys when I have more to say. So, we're halfway through volume 13, and stinking show thinks he can ask me Sao to come with him now. But she's clearly Kyo's. Like, I understand dude realizes that she cares about him as, you know, a person or a demon or whatever. But seriously? They're really going to try to do this? I don't know how I feel about this. We haven't gotten Misao's reaction to it yet, but he just asked her and I'm, it was the end of a chapter. So I'm just like, what? What's happening? Anyway, I will let you know her reaction and we'll chat again. Okay, completed volume 13. Misao's answer was clear, but at the same time she did something really stupid. <laughs> and... Ended up, ugh, anyways, it's spoilery, so I'm not going to tell you what she did, but she did something super stupid, and this left on a cliffhanger. So, I'm going to dive right into 14, and then I'm sure we'll talk again. Okay, so, big things going on here. How that main conflict I've been discussing for a while ends is, it's okay. I'm okay with how that ended. So we're about to enter what looks like the last arc of the series. I mean, I'm most of the way through volume 14, and there's only four volumes after this one. So clearly we're going to enter the final arc of the story, and that's where I'm at. And it's... Um, I'm feeling okay so far. This last arc will be very telling of how I feel about the series, obviously. So... End of volume 14, we're back in the human world, and the effects on the humans about her Senka Maiden powers are kind of coming to light, and so this last story arc will be interesting. It did confirm it's the final arc, so there's not just going to be a couple of little tiny arcs. This will be a four and a half volume arc, so... Anyhow, digging into the next one, and the laundry is still washing, just so you know. So, the final story arc is what I thought it would be. <laughs> After all, there's Smutty doing it. She's pregnant, just like I thought. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to be interesting. There's already been some adverse effects, so... I, yeah, I'm just, here we are. <laughs> and it'll be interesting to see how this ends. It can end a couple different ways. Mangas don't always have happy endings, so we'll see how this goes. Honor Guard, so is Honor Guard basically just figured out that she's pregnant and their reactions are like pricelessly cute. And I'm, like, super adoring it. So, yeah, there's my thought at the moment. We'll see how the rest of this goes. The pregnancy-related reveal that I called very early on in the series has just been confirmed. If she has his baby, she will die. There's three volumes to figure out if they're going to let her die and let it end there, or if they're going to find a way to save her. We'll see what happens. We have now reached the cliche, get rid of this baby. No, I'm going to have this baby argument. So, yeah, I quickly got dressed for the day because it's about 6.30 now. And I don't know. Just felt like the right time to go upstairs and at least get dressed and, you know, pull my hair back. Because 
it's a greasy mess, so it's not going to be down today. But that's not what you're here for. <laughs> you don't care. But yeah. So, diving back into Blackbird Volume 16, there's a good chance I may finish the series before I leave for work, because I don't leave for work for another hour and a half at the earliest. Other than having a cat cuddler, I did finish Volume 16. I... Sorry, he's trying to knock things over. <laughs> I... They finally found a loophole that I saw very early on. So, I'm like... They're making this way harder than it has to be. So I'm surprised nobody had thought of it before. And secondly, why aren't they documenting everything for future Senka Maidens? Huh? Why not? Relying on a 300-year-old document where the Senka Maiden dies rather than writing their own and figuring it out as they go and using that just kind of as a guidepost. They're using it as gospel. See, this is this is what I'm dealing with this morning. Somebody who tries to knock things over and be in the middle of everything. But I love him anyway. So yes, moving on to volume 17, where this ending I think is going to be pretty cliche, but I'm okay with that. Finally, in the second to last volume, we're discussing the fact that her parents still don't even know he's a demon, even though they know she's pregnant with his baby. So we're finally addressing that. One volume to go. Clearly, we'll resolve this stuff with the parents. The stuff with the baby boy will happen. And we'll go from there. So I just finished Blackbird Volume 18. This is the final volume. I have some thoughts on the series as a whole now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go upstairs, start doing a little bit of makeup and stuff so I can finish getting ready for the day. And we'll chat about it. Hey, friends. Editing Gremlin Shay here for you. With some sad news, <laughs> my final wrap up of the Blackbird vlog actually ended up corrupted. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my thoughts here for you. Hopefully they're still cohesive. It's only been a couple of days since I finished the series, so everything is still very fresh and I don't think my feelings have changed over time. So all in all, I feel like the ending of the story is very on brand for the story that it is. I feel like sometimes when you're reading a manga series, when it gets that long, it can lose some of the integrity of the characters and the ending doesn't feel true to the characters that you started out with. I feel like this series did a really good well of keeping that cohesiveness throughout while also still acknowledging the growth of the characters and the things that they learn from that. Now, all of the stuff to do with the baby was slightly different than I had thought it would be. Essentially... How it ended was how I knew it would end, but the means to the end were different. So in this, I don't want to spoil you, but overall, I gave this series four stars. It's a solid, fun, paranormal shoujo romance. It is not perfect. It is flawed. It, it, it didn't age as well as some manga that's written now may but it's still a really fun ride. As you see throughout the vlog, I do talk about some things that I found a bit problematic or troublesome, and you may feel the same way. So if those things are very problematic for you or triggering or something you just really can't get behind, give the series a hard pass. You're not going to hurt anybody's feelings by doing so. But I really hope you guys will at least try out the first volume, see how you feel, and go from there. All, I feel like the series got really good about volume five, if I'm honest. Like, I loved the establishment, but once volume five hit and that plot really took off, not just the romantic plot, but the actual overarching plot as to why the romantic plot was happening, that's when the series got really interesting for me. I got very attached to the characters that was another thing that was really great about this series is you got attached to the characters relatively quickly, especially the whole Tengu guard, Dai Tengu, is that what they call them? I don't remember what they call them right off the bat. But that whole group where it became like found family, I was all about those guys. It was so fun to see all the connections that way. And it was just a good time. I really enjoyed my time with this series and I don't regret reading it. I don't regret buying a box set, none of that whatsoever. I really am glad I listened to my friends, and I'm really glad I found it for a great deal. 
I ended up only spending about $5 of volume by buying it in the box set, which is a really great deal, honestly. So I have the whole video where I unboxed it and there should be a link to it if it's still available. So I will leave that link for you guys if you are interested in the actual box set. So you'll see me unbox the whole thing so you'll see it all together and it comes with a little art book that's really nice. And yeah. So those are kind of my final thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I've not ever really done a reaction vlog like this before. I mean, the closest thing I did was when I reread Fruits Basket, and so I was kind of organically talking about my thoughts reading through it then. So that's like the closest thing I've done to a vlog like this. So if you like these styles of vlogs, let me know in the comments down below shorter series that you would like to see me do this with. Whether I've read the series before or not, I can see if I can get it digitally or borrow it from a friend or maybe even find a library that has it and sit and read them there. I don't know. But if you guys are interested in me doing more things like this, let me know in the comments down below. And thanks again for checking out this video. I know it's been long, but my thoughts were thorough on the series as much as I could be without giving away too many spoilers. I can't say it's spoiler free, but it's low spoilers for sure. So... Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.